Oh, hi. Yeah, I'm just doing a superset of, of thinking about what I'm going to do in the next video and, uh, and also where I'm going to bury the people who aren't subscribing to the channel. It's a, it's a very efficient way of, of thinking. I'm sitting and thinking at the same time, so it's, it's really like two combinations or hybrid training systems that I'm employing right now. I'm a genius. Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Land Bodybuilding, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about combining two exercises into one exercise. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is that somebody in the last video, or a few videos ago, depending on when I upload this, said that they were combining stiff-legged deadlifts, or Romanian deadlifts, with bent-over rows, and they got some great results from it. Now, I'm going to say that this is definitely worth investigating when it comes down to changing things up in your training, and also finding out what is the sweet spot for you to get the most overall body stimulation, right? Because there is a difference between trying to isolate a muscle group or trying to stimulate the entire body. And I do think that using a combination of both in your training is necessary. Once in a while you need to isolate a body part or really make sure you hit that one body part to failure. And then other times you want to hit as much of the body, the entire body, as possible in a movement. Safely that is. I mean obviously you don't want to do it in an unsafe sort of way, such as standing on a balance ball and squatting five plates, uh, you know, you get, my, you get my point, right? So I experimented a little bit with the Romanian deadlift and the bent over row uh, as a finisher technique after I take my set to failure in bent over rows. And I noticed that, yeah, it helps hit a little bit of the hamstring, but I do notice that it inhibits a little bit of the range of motion that I want to employ during my bent over row. But assuming that you already hit failure, Right? Assuming that you already hit failure in the bent over row and you want to basically stimulate the overall body, one might argue, maybe just for convenience sake itself, who knows, uh, that they might want to extend the set by doing some Romanian deadlifts to finish it off. And also not to mention because isometrically you will be stimulating the back further into failure just by holding on to the weight and going through the motion of the deadlift. So. In this way, you can experiment and sometimes employ ways to extend the set, assuming that you can take the pain involved, right? Because, you know, I talk a big game when it comes down to extending the set, but there are times where I'm like, man, I can't take the, f the set any more into failure, right? I'm dying here, right? Uh, lateral raises are one of those things where, you know, you say you do 40 reps of lateral raises, and then, you know, you could go deeper into failure by just doing partial reps. Well, a lot of times my arms are on fire so badly already that to do any more reps, I might burn down the entire city I live in. That's, that's, and that's, that's a risk I just don't want to put people through. You know what I'm saying? I mean, who wants to do that to people? I'm just being considerate. It's not because I'm a wimp. It's just because I'm extremely considerate of other people. Humans is, mostly. So for purposes of demonstration, I'm just going to do a bent over row here, just with one plate aside here. Obviously, I could do like a thousand plates aside. So for any of you doubters out there, a thousand plates at least would be on each side, just like just rep and know. But you know, I don't want to intimidate you or make you feel insecure or nothing like that. That's not what this channel is about, you know? So uh, what I'm going to do is show you just some light Romanian deadlifts here and bent over rows, okay? That bent over row Romanian deadlift hybrid. Now, I'm not saying for you to do this in your training. I'm just saying, hey, maybe try it one time and see what happens. I mean, maybe you'll like it. As long as you can maintain the proper arch in the lower back, then you'll be okay. All right? So yeah, so say you're doing, say you're like Mr. Johnny Jim. Your name is Mr. Johnny Jim. And you're in the gym and you're just like doing a bit over row and you're like just getting lots of reps and then finally Johnny Jim is like at the point where he can't do anymore, you know what I'm saying? He's just like, oh my God, oh my God, this is so hard. Oh my God, oh my God, right? And then he's thinking, but you know what? I can still get some hamstrings in right now, you know? And I can still, you know, get that bar right to the waist, right? And I can kind of do a hybrid, extend and then, and then contract a little bit. Maybe I can do a hybrid. Maybe I didn't have to come all the way up like Romanians. You would just come part way, right? Just to kind of lightly contract the hamstrings in the back. And then maybe, then maybe Johnny Jim is pushing his back into failure even more so and getting a little bit of hamstring work to boot. You know, what's not to like about that? I don't know, I think it might be a valid technique that was offered by one of the subscribers here on this channel. Mountain. 
So another example of this might be the dumbbell pullover, where basically you're doing pullovers to hit the lats. Some people say they hit their serratus and their chest with pull, uh, dumbbell pullovers, but I find for myself I hit the lats mostly. But what you could do is a hybrid between the dumbbell pullover and the tricep extension or skull crusher, right? And by combining both of these exercises, you may be able to hit some more so overall body stimulation, maybe save yourself some time in a workout. And at the same time, just hit something from a different angle because sometimes when you finish a movement in a different way, you may notice that there's some additional stimulation in an area that you've never felt before. Now, do I think you should do this as a standard process all the time? No. Now the way I might do this is, is maybe in the opposite direction. Maybe I'm doing skull crushers, right? And because my triceps hit absolute failure, then I need to bring a bigger muscle group such as the lats in, in order to stretch the lats out and then use that momentum in order to pump out a few more tricep reps. I may be able to put the tricep into a deeper level of failure and at the same time stimulate a little bit of the lats. Now I know this principle is a little bit different than the Romanian deadlift as far as I'm not necessarily stimulating the overall body so much, but I am using a bigger muscle group in order to put the smaller muscle group into a deeper level of failure and this could have some benefits. So for the most part, usually you're starting off with a smaller muscle group or a muscle group that doesn't require as much weight and then at some point in the set or later on in the set you're bringing in a bigger muscle group or a bigger combination of muscle groups in order to push that smaller muscle group into a deeper level of failure. So it's a way of hybridizing the exercises, right? You're bringing in another exercise really uh, to push the first exercise into a deeper level of failure and it can kind of make things interesting too. You know, just for that sake, it, it can kind of be fun. So these are two examples of a way that you could incorporate this sort of uh, strategy in your training and you may find some other ways to come to you and you know put them down in the comments down below if you find that there's some things that you're doing that are kind of like this that are actually working for you as well. So I hope this helps you understand that you can get creative in bodybuilding. It doesn't have to be like, hey, there's a stone. I'll move it from here to there. And, and that's basically it, right? You don't have to just be a grog, you know what I mean? Like be a caveman. You, you can actually get creative a little bit and have a little bit of fun. It's almost like you become the, the Picasso of bodybuilding, eh? The Picasso, huh? Thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalandbodybuilding.com and thanks to the Patreon supporters and take care for now. Mount. Natural Land.